Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today you join me in an absolutely glorious summer day here in Southern England. And as a consequence of the weather, I've received a question from a viewer about summer styles and the essentials that a well-dressed gentleman would really need to be equipped with to survive the torrid heat of a summer time. And this question comes from Marcello Clemente. I hope I've said that right. And he says, I would like you to give me some suggestions about shirts, trousers and shoes to wear during the summer season, especially during the warm days. So here we are again. All right, summer's crept up on us, it's arrived, and we're all facing the challenges of that big fiery ball in the sky, which makes our lives a little bit less comfortable on hot days where you have to be outdoors. And it kind of makes us deviate away from the standard sartorial styles that we often defer to. Because when we think of intentionally well-dressed men, we tend to think of a man wearing a suit, of a collar and a tie, maybe dark and conservative colours. But to me, all of those rules go out through the window when the summer arrives, because now it is a question of surviving against the elements. You know, the same in the winter time where we wear overcoats, seagulls, where we wear overcoats to keep warm. Now, at this time of year, you know, we have to go in the opposite direction and dress for that climate. So I'm going to talk about my picks that I have to have to help me get through the summer months. Just a few accessories, some of the major items as well, because I do really change from my quite sartorial style to a more relaxed, comfortable style, particularly in the 30 plus degree Celsius days that we see in the high days of summer. Okay, let's jump right into it and let's start with the footwear because as I often say to gentlemen, the shoes that you wear are the foundation of the outfit and if you get the shoes wrong, the outfit very quickly goes to rat's tails. So get the right shoes to get the right aesthetic. And aesthetic is the real key word here because there are so many options you can choose in the summer months, it comes down to your personal preference and the sort of style that you are trying to project to the world. Now I see no problem wearing sort of white or paler leather training shoes, sneakers, whatever you choose to call them, tennis shoes. But for me, as a man over 50 years of age, I've kind of distanced myself from the younger leather athletic shoe when I'm trying to be a little, more, little bit more relaxed yet stylish at the same time. It can be done, you do see it being done. However, I tend to think that a little bit more formal shoes of a sort are a better fit. Now, the deck shoe is a route many people take. This is kind of relaxed, it's comfortable, it's made of leather, a darker leather, quite often you can choose whatever leather colour you like, but certainly it looks more relaxed and appropriate for the summer months. Me, myself, I used to crew yachts in the summers when I was a younger man, up in the Baltic Sea when I was in the military, so I kind of find it very difficult to wear yacht shoes unless I'm on a yacht. It feels a bit strange for me. I tend to veer down the path of the good old catch-all favourite, the desert boot, the suede desert boot. Because for me, it's such a classic and versatile boot. It can be worn, and a boot's probably the wrong word, you know, it's such a low boot, it's almost a shoe. But it is a chucker boot in essence. But it can be worn with jeans, with chinos, and it can equally be worn with shorts. I see it quite frequently worn with shorts. It's a great comfort boot which looks slightly more stylish. You know, if you start a day in shorts and you want to throw on a pair of chinos to go out for lunch with friends in the yacht club or whatever, you only have to change the trousers. The boots can remain the same if you're wearing uh, a desert boot. But if you want to level up a little in the style world, now I'm not a fan of sandals on men. Certainly any uh, shoe which uh, exposes a gentleman's toes isn't going to be something that I would ever wear. Not that I've got particularly ugly feet, but I just don't think it's appropriate and stylish. So for me, I would sort of veer down the route of a ventilated shoe 
opposed to the full-on sandal. It does the same sort of thing. It provides airflow to the foot. You don't have to wear a sock with it. And yet there is an element of style with a ventilated shoe, which means you could wear it in quite a formal situation. It's office appropriate. It's business appropriate. Certainly you could wear it, you know, in the middle of a city or at the seaside or wherever you choose to be. So that would be my sort of choices when it comes to footwear. Now, as we move up the body, we're talking about the trousers, what covers the lower half of the body. And for me, without a doubt, the trouser of choice in the summer months is a natural cotton chino trouser. And as the weather gets warmer, the colors that we wear tend to get lighter, paler in response to that brighter sun. And this is the beauty of chinos. You can wear quite lovely pastel colors. You know, you've got pinks and browns and ecru and all the shades of the rainbow that you choose. You can find a pair of chino trousers in them. But chino trousers have this wonderful sort of knack, this chameleon ability to be worn very casually. You know, you can even roll the bottom of them up and sort of lounge around on the beach, or you can wear them uh, as a more formal trouser, you could even wear a nice pair of shoes, that ventilated shoe that we've talked about, or a desert boot. And then you're appropriate to go into a restaurant for lunch and maybe into the office in an office environment uh, with the chino. And in a lighter pastel colour, really exemplifies the summer. And don't forget, there's different styles you can have. You can have flat fronted, pleated fronted. There's a lot of your personal aesthetic can be represented in those trousers. And if you're going to wear shorts, I would add here to exactly the same principle, but with short trousers. Just make sure that if you are wearing a pair of sort of natural chino cotton trousers or short trousers, right, above the knee, no shorts below the knee at all. They're not shorts if they're below the knee, they're some sort of weird trouser hybrid. But for me, above the knee, chino, maybe a pleated front in a nice pastel color, stylish and elegant, regardless of the gentleman's age. Okay, let's talk about the shirt. What's covering the main part of the body? Now, I would avoid simple t-shirts here. The t-shirt has very little going for it, all right? It's got no stylish embellishments. It's got nothing which allows you to express your personality other than what may be on that shirt itself. And if you're wearing a printed t-shirt and you're above the age of 30, I suggest you need to get a grip of yourself and start looking in the mirror and deciding if you're going to be an intentionally well-dressed man who's some, or somebody who looks like a boy for the rest of your life. So my options would be, all right, if you like a t-shirt, and let's be honest, t-shirts flatter virtually nobody when it comes to body shape because they really don't do anybody any favors unless you're in fantastic physical athletic condition. My choice would be a polo shirt. If you're just somebody who wishes to lounge and chill out, polo shirt gives you a collar, a bit more shape to the outfit. It's a much better way to relax in the warmer months. But if you're a little bit more stylish, maybe a button down collared shirt like I'm wearing now in a natural material like linen as I am wearing now. Choices of colors go for pastel, light, and cheerful colors. They look best in direct sunlight. I'm wearing a pink colored linen shirt, button down, long sleeve. I always say to people, go for long sleeve shirts whenever the option presents itself. When you have a short sleeve shirt, that's all you've got. You've got no alternative but a short sleeve shirt to wear. If you buy a long sleeve shirt, you can roll the sleeves up in increments. I've got mine halfway rolled up my forearms at the moment. It gives me a sort of slightly more stylish look. Later, if I'm warm, I can roll it up above the elbow. I've got a lot of choice if I buy long sleeves. Also, if it's a really hot day and I want to protect my arms from those glaring ultraviolet rays, you can roll them down and protect as much of the body as you wish. But certainly always go for long sleeves in hot environments. It, it absolutely works best for you. And stay with those cheery, happy colors and you're going to look cheerful. All right, let me paint a picture for you. It's a, a warm day like today. It's above 30 degrees. You've been invited to a barbecue, but it's a very stylish one in you know uh, the boss's backyard and you want to cut a dash. You know people are going to be formally dressed. What do you wear? Well, what you need to opt for is that unstructured blazer. Now the navy blazer, the little black dress of the men's wardrobe, it rules the roost when it comes to effortless cool 
in normal life, but when the temperatures rise, it's simply too hot. Hot, And I have to typically opt for an unstructured, unlined blazer. Now, unstructured, unlined means it's simply the outer fabric. It's quite a light, often doesn't have a great deal of shape. It doesn't have any padding, and it's quite a casual garment in many regards. But the simple fact that you're wearing a blazer style jacket, uh, you know, a sports jacket or an outer jacket, whatever you want to call it, it's going to cut you apart from the vast amount of people who are probably not going to put that much thought in the way they dress. Single breasted, nothing other than that. Simple unstructured blazer in a pastel color. This is your opportunity to uh, show a bit of style coordination. You know, if you're wearing, say, a pink blazer, wear uh, fawn-colored trousers, or vice versa. You can mix and match it up a little and show that you command the powers of the color wheel in life. So make sure you look appropriate for the situation. And you're going to look smart and elegant. And of course, wearing that blazer, it allows you a little room for personal expression because you're going to have a breast pocket. You can put a pocket square in there. You've got lapels. You can wear a boutonniere or a lapel badge. All of a sudden, you're incredibly stylish and dapper, but you've got a layer of protection against you and that sun in that extra garment, which is actually going to help keep you cool and it's going to make you look stylish as well. So that's the way to go. And of course, stay with natural fabrics. Go for linens, go for cottons. Don't go for any polyester blends or anything like that, which will retain the heat. Go for those natural fabrics in cheerful colors, and you are going to rule the roost in that barbecue. On these super hot days where the sun is beating down unrelentingly upon you, there's one thing you need, and that's all over protection. And a hat becomes not just a stylish addition to your outfit, but something necessary to keep you in good health. Because put one of these on the head, and all of a sudden the world is a little bit cooler, and you're a little bit more protected. Particularly if you're a gentleman such as myself, who's a bit short on the hair front, or if you choose to shave your head or keep a very uh, short hairstyle. Because the, that sun is gonna cause you to get heat stroke, life isn't gonna turn out well for you, if you get too much exposure to that, let alone getting burned by the sun on the top of your head, there is no fun in that. So choose a nice hat. You don't have to spend a pile of money. A lot of hats today, just like this one, this is made of 100% paper. So, you know, it's only good for about two seasons, but actually when it's on, it's stylish, it's elegant, it's got a nice broad brim to allow me protection from the sun, and it also has quite a stylish look. Good enough to wear with that blazer if we're going to the barbecue, or good enough to wear, you know, if we're sat next to the, the pool, or if we go to the beach. It's exactly what you need to keep yourself, you know, nice and protected from the sun. Now, if you really want to go for a style bump, you can go full traditional, get yourself a boater hat. Very recently, I was in the States visiting a friend of mine, Timothy Big Pretty Co from the, from the uh, Big Pretty Man Style Channel, and he was wearing a boater hat, that most classic of British hat styles. And as we walked around the streets of Philadelphia, the number of times people shouted encouragement or appreciation towards him because of the hat that he was wearing. We lost count. You know, people shouting, hey, nice hat. It was really breathtaking, the impact that a simple boater hat can have. Straw, comfortable, natural, keeps the sun off, and looks incredibly elegant at the same time. Wear a hat to protect your head. And also in the summertime, it's a time where we get a little bit sweaty. We need to freshen up a bit, particularly if we're out all day. Now for me, a summertime fragrance is a necessity because I like to smell my best at any time that you encounter me. Nobody wants to linger in the mind of another person who's just met you as the guy who smells a bit sweaty. So get yourself a nice summer scent. Summer scents are very different to winter scents, which tend to be dense, heavy, and super powerful. In the summertime, we want to opt for fragrances that have a little bit of a lighter element to them. They can often be quite zesty or aquatic in their nature because they allow that, that, that fragrance cuts through the heavy, sweaty days. Now, I've got a couple of choices here. I've got Floris, and this is Neroli Voyage. Very 
cutting, zesty, very fragrant indeed. Very much the zesty summer fragrance. Or, quite expensive mind, over hundred pounds. But, if you want to go on the cheap end, a Drakkar Essence by Guy La Roche. Now this, is the epitome of an aquatic fragrance. Really inexpensive, not a lot of money at all. It's probably about 10 pounds for a bottle of this size. And you can apply it, you know, nice little bottle, keep it in your bag, apply it halfway through the day. So after lunch, you feel all fresh and clean and people who encounter you will remember. Do you know what? It was a super hot day. I met that guy in two in the afternoon. And the first thing that struck me was the wonderful fragrance that he was emitting into the room. That's the way you want to be remembered. Something else which is essential in the summer months, I'm wearing them now, sunglasses. They protect you from the unrelenting ultraviolet rays. They stop you squinting when you're looking at the camera or driving your car, but they also give you a style bump if you choose your pair correctly. Now, make sure you get good UV protection. It's all very well looking good, but you want protection as well. That's the most important thing. And opt for a timeless, elegant style. Something like aviators or club masters. You can't go far wrong with those, regardless of the shape of your face. But when you do go eyeglass shopping, make sure you take somebody with you who can give you a good point of view and think how comfortable they're going to be if you wear them hour after hour, as we often do in the summer months. But don't forget, sunglasses protect you and make you look stylish at the same time. And finally, how can I end any video without talking about something I love very much? And that's a wristwatch. Because in the summer months, you're going to wear your sleeves rolled up most of the time. Or actually be without sleeves at all. And you want to wear a watch so that people can see that you're somebody who appreciates and values time. And that you wear a watch to show that appreciation and respect that you have for the one thing in the world that we can't buy or exchange for anything else. It's time itself. Now, in the summer months, I put away any of my watches which have a leather band or a fabric band, because typically these are going to absorb sweat, it's going to increase their deterioration, they're going to break down. For me, at this time of year, there are two choices. Either the rubber strap or a synthetic rubber type strap, as I'm wearing now, or I have here now actually, not wearing it, but this typically seen on waterproof watches, they are very robust, very comfortable, they're very, very, they conform to the shape of your wrist, obviously, but they allow you to jump in the water, go in the pool, do whatever you need to do, go swimming at the beach without any concern at all. Of course, as long as the watch you have is also waterproof. Or the other alternative is something like a, a metal bracelet. Make sure though, that it's stainless steel and it's the sort of bracelet which is going to be happily plunged into the water. And there you go. You are showing the world that you appreciate time and you're wearing a watch to make you stand out from the crowd. Because let's be honest, in the summer, we get very little opportunity to embellish our clothing with any of the little touches we use to express our individuality most of the time. So we don't get to wear a tie with a different colour, a pocket square, you know, or a boutonniere, or anything like that. A watch is the one thing that you can wear. I mean, earlier in the year, I was in Dubai on holiday, swimming around the pool, and everybody had their waterproof diving watches on, and it, it was almost like a you know fashion parade of stylish, expensive watches in the pool. So make sure you get the watch which will conform to your lifestyle and the aesthetics which you seek to live your life by. So there we go, folks. Those were my summer essentials. That's what I need to get through these hot, sweaty, humid, steamy days. And I think you'll agree, if you follow that path, you won't be far wrong either. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. If you'd like to ask me a question, like Marcello Clemente did, and get my response on a video, drop it into the email you'll see on the screen now, or just send me a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can either buy me a coffee or you can become a patron. I make additional Patreon videos, which are over there on my Patreon channel, the link to which you will find in the show notes below. So until the next time, stay cool on these hot summer days, and I will see you again very soon.